So today I want to go over two whole body exercises that everybody should try. My name is Dr. Chad Kuntz. I'm a sports physical therapist. And again, I just want to walk you guys through two exercises. I want to bring them about to your attention. I think they're great exercises in so many ways. I mean, if I could only fit every benefit in the title, it would be a paragraph just in the title. We're talking about motor coordination, control, balance, strength, uh, awareness, the whole gamut, okay, are really in these two exercises. A lot of the fitness professionals that I talk to are working with people who want to burn a lot of calories fast. They want to just build muscle. They want to get the most out of their workout. Maybe they only see you uh, two times a week, heck, maybe once a week. And so you really want to give them the best workout. And so that's really where these two workouts come in. Uh, for my fitness professionals who are teaching group instructor classes, um, I imagine that these could be attempted. And when I say the fact that everyone should try, it doesn't mean they have to be done as shown with like what feels like perfect form, good control, good pace, good range of motion. A lot of people, even if they're elderly, just regress it. Just don't regress it so they go through half the exercise uh, range of motion. Um, they, you know, they don't have to go through this big gamut of range of motion when they're doing it. So keep that in mind and needless to say, let's get into it. All right, so the first one's going to be single arm kettlebell squat. So you really won't need a whole heck of a lot of weight on this. In fact, a lot of people are just learning to do this. All they need to do is put one arm up and they don't even have to hold on to any weight, okay? So for those who are somewhat advanced, I would say 10, 15 pounds might be all they need. But you're going to walk through the same squat that you've hopefully taught your clients how to do well. I like to use my opposite arm or my non-weighted arm forwards, okay, when I'm doing this. That kind of gives me a little bit of a counterbalance, all right? Now notice I have the green arrow up there because I want to cue your reaching arm into external rotation. Man, I would guess nine out of 10 people are in internal rotation when they reach their arm overhead. So just make sure that's an external rotation. For those who can, you wanna go through the full available range of motion and you want to try to keep the arm as straight as possible. So you can see right there, I've got a little bit of a bend in my left arm, doing pretty good, arm's pretty straight. All right, but you want to make sure to try to stabilize that kettlebell as well. I'm purposefully holding it like that because it requires some extra co-contraction, some stability in the arm, my rotator cuff is on fire, my core is on fire. I will say for those just getting started, a lot of people tend to lean too far forwards. So make sure you really cue butt back. And just pay attention to where their arm placements are. So again, I like to use my left arm to kind of hang out of my trunk to either cue the core. You saw earlier I was reaching far forwards. Just make sure that those stay in the same place throughout the full range of motion. So yeah, this is a good example of what we're looking at. My hand, elbow, shoulder, trunk, glutes, really all in one line. So that's pretty good right there. You might argue I'm a little tight with my arm. I might be able to come up just a little bit more. But overall, that's kind of what we're looking for. So again, a, a great whole body exercise. You don't have to have the kettlebell in hand, especially for my fitness class instructors. Just raise the arm up overhead and have them try to squat. Stay on the heels might be enough. For my one-on-one -on -one personal training clients, sure, you could throw this in a series of exercises to whew, really get them working, you know. They could do a set on the left arm, switch, and do the set on the other side. But it's great because there's so many muscles involved, so many joints involved, and they can learn a lot from this one exercise. The second one I wanted to walk you guys through are the squat thrusters. Some of you maybe aren't too familiar with this. I would imagine those in kind of the CrossFit world, Olympic lift world, they might be a little bit more familiar with this. But again, a wonderful whole body exercise that can teach your clients a lot. Now I want to point out something. Look at where, right there, I want you to point, see something here. One of my mistakes that I caught after I watched it. Look at where my right elbow is compared to my left. And I, 
I see this a lot when I'm working with clients and we're trying to progress them into this exercise. For those of you who've had shoulder problems, more times than not, their shoulder is going to go into internal rotation with a little bit of a compensatory shrug through the levator scap and upper trap. So one angle that you can really learn a lot about this is just making sure, and you can even assess this at the top right there as they get started and they come on the way down, make sure that their elbows are pointing forwards. And in other words, look at my left arm. My left wrist, my left elbow is perfectly aligned. My left forearm is pointed up towards the ceiling. So that's great. How about my right side? Now, you will notice I was crazy sweaty, and so maybe I could put the excuse of fatigue. But I know certain of you, you, you won't let me get away with that. Good, good deal. I won't let myself get away with that either. I've got to clean that up, and I have since then. But you want to focus on actually shoulder posture, shoulder positioning, sitting down and back. We are doing a squat again. And as you come up, make sure that they're going vertical. So people will often tend to kind of slide forwards. They'll come off the heels and they'll lean forwards. Or they're just unable to maintain that tall position off their heels due to poor balance. Another thing you can observe is their lower back compensation or position. So how much low back compensation did I get with this one? I would say quite a bit. I mean, at the top, go rewind that for a second. At the top, look at the angle of my shorts. So basically, is my front uh, lining of my shorts lower than my back? Absolutely, by quite a bit. You can even see a little bit of a divot in my low back. So I'm definitely getting some compensatory extension from my lower spine. So that's it, guys. Those are the two. With this one, you can add a little speed component. You probably won't even need to have them hold on to much weight. I mean, even... I was gassed here, but man, I think I only did like 35s on each side. And after a set of 10 or 12, your body's feeling it. There's a great amount of core involvement with this too. So heck, even if you just wanted to have fun and put together two exercises back to back and, you know, crank out 10 or 15 reps, the kettlebell squat, do both sides, go into the squat thrusters, and you're accomplishing a whole hell of a lot just with those two, those two exercises. Like I said, building a lot of muscle, building core strength, building awareness, building motor control, building really better postural habits with the squat thrusters, building some level of explosion and kind of a plyometric ability, building control. So there's a lot that you can learn and observe and teach your clients with both of those two. So. I hope that helps. Uh, thanks for hopping on. Again, my name is Dr. Chad Koontz. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me and we'd love to help. Thank you so much. Take care.